Do the shoulder pads help with her mobility? Does the hair or round glasses help with her damage or flanking? Like, I just don't know past that. It, it is fashionable, eclectic, but fashionable. Hey besties, I'm back. Today, the format is gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be a lot more conversational. And just a heads up, I am sick. My throat is killing me. So I do apologize ahead of time if I'm quieter or seem slightly off or lower energy. But I do have stuff I wanna get off my chest. And this time, the topic is Concord and my personal opinions regarding the game's character and just visual design and appeal. But before we begin, I do want to address the white elephant in the room, which is the failure of the game. This game's failure has real life implications. We're talking about people losing their jobs, possibly burning bridges and leaving the industry altogether. That's why I need you guys to understand that when I'm looking at these characters, I am judging them in isolation. I am not trying to place blame onto any individual, any developer, any artist, or even the studio as a whole. I am just judging the character on its own. Look, you cannot work every day on a project for eight years without becoming emotionally invested. So I do extend my empathy and compassion towards the team. I worked on a project passionately every day for two years and it ended up getting shelved. I was devastated. So I can't imagine what they are feeling and going through. I'm making a video about this because it's an interesting case study where I really asked myself, what makes certain characters appeal to me and certain ones don't. And what I realized is I have a criteria that all the characters I've ever been interested in or wanted to play meet. So there's four things. One, they have a point of interest. Two, they have a theme. Three, they have a power fantasy. And four, they are legible and unique. So essentially, I'm gonna give you two examples of characters that meet my criteria. And then afterwards, we're gonna talk about Baz and Duchess from Concord. So first point was point of interest. And I have a great example here, Lucio from Overwatch. There always needs to be something attractive about the character you want to play. I'm not talking about physical attractiveness. I'm talking about a focal point or a set of focal points that grab your attention. So for Lucio, it's clearly his bottom half. Your eyes are drawn to his baggy pants and then it goes all the way down to his glowy futuristic skates. And that's intentional design because he uses these skates to wall ride, which is a unique ability that only Lucio has in the game. So it makes sense that this part of him is such a focal point. So this is an early concept of Lucio where he's got like these sound equalizer pants. And in fact, it says here that developers toned down the outfit in later versions because they felt like it was too distracting for gameplay. So if anything, this confirms that the character's focal points are in his lower half, right? We're talking about his baggy pants, his music pants, and his skates. In fact, these initial concepts hyper-emphasize these features to, to the point where Blizzard had to reel it back in later versions because it was going to be too distracting. Number two on my criteria is what is this character's theme? Well, Lucio is a DJ skater simple. What is this character's power fantasy? Well, Lucio is this super fast sonic speed wall riding DJ. Also very simple. Is this character legible and unique? Heck yeah, he is. You can clearly tell that this person's musically inclined. In his earlier versions, he literally has these turntables. Okay, next is Jane Doe from ZZZ. Yes, she's a complete badass, but just look at where your eyes are being drawn to. Here is her combat animation slowed down. It is beautiful, so just please enjoy. <laughs> So I'm sure it's pretty obvious, but this character's point of interest is her 
buttock region. No, her like hips, thighs, and behind. Okay, like that area happens to also be where her tail is, which is a defining feature for the character, right? Because she's 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 a rat queen. What is this character's theme? Well, Jane Doe is a rat girl agent. So number three, what is this character's power fantasy? She is this super hot dangerous and agile rat queen. Is this character legible and unique? Yes, she is the only rat theorin that I am aware of in ZZZ. Next is Baz from Concord. Baz is a highly mobile flanker that can quickly get in, take out a curie or support and dip. So her point of interest is her hairstyle and her shoulder pot. <laughs> shoulder pads. My issue is if you're going to take the time to accentuate these features, but not allow them to tell you anything about the character, where she's from or how she plays, I do think it's a missed opportunity. To me, highlighting her purple hair and her wide shoulder pads isn't much more than a fashion statement. Like, do the shoulder pads help with her mobility? Does her hair and round glasses maybe help with her like flanking or like damage of sorts? It doesn't say anything past being a fashion statement. Okay, so number two, what is this character's theme? Well, she has an eclectic style. That is first and foremost. Secondly, I can tell she's holding knives. I don't quite like how what jumps out at me first is her fashion taste. I'd much rather it be information regarding how she plays, her fighting style, her class. Again, she's making a fashion statement before she's making a character statement. And there's nothing here that reads tracker, like maybe her glasses, if you know, maybe they see like infrared or I don't know, send signals and stuff like that. But like, I didn't even know after watching the um, character showcase video that Sony put out, what is this character's power fantasy? Well, uh, per wiki, she is a fashionable tracker specializing in melee and throwing knives. That's how I found out that she's a tracker. The question I asked myself is, does their design convey all the information needed for me to know why I should pick them and when I should pick them. This needs to be clear as day because you don't want players to struggle before they even get into a game. For example, if I'm a diehard Genji main and I booted up Concord, RIP, I should be able to tell instinctively that Baz here is a DPS flanker. Is Baz legible? I would say it's kind of muddy because while she is wearing red and red is traditionally associated with damage and DPS, and you can clearly tell that she has sort of like an athletic stance where her knees are bent and like she has more weight on one leg than the other showing that she's pretty much like she's ready to jump or go or like be in the action, be on the offense, which by the way, I'm not the biggest fan of. I think they should have exaggerated this pose and had it so that her posture wasn't so upright and just had her leaning more onto one leg than the other because right now it just looks like her weight is perfectly distributed because she's literally standing straight up and yeah she's wearing knee pads which i guess show that she's athletic but these things aren't enough to give this character identity it is not enough for me to know that she is a flanker or a tracker i think she comes across to me as being more fashionable than sporty or agile or athletic so the next concord character i want to talk about is duchess who actually does have some similarities to may from overwatch so we are going to talk about the two together what is may's theme well everything about may screams ice clearly that's her elemental theme and she's gonna have a bunch of that in her kits we've got endothermic glass Faster, ice Wall, Cryo Freeze, and Blizzard. Uh, very strong with a theme. So for Duchess, what do you think her elemental theme is? Because you know how I had to find out? I had to read the description of one of her abilities. Molten Metal Wall that block rivals and protect allies. Y'all, that's just not clear to me design-wise. Like, yeah, she's got gold on her arms here, but like... I don't know. I thought it was just like decorative jewelry or something like an adornment like like this this gold detailing like like maybe it indicates that she's from like a rich empire of sorts or that she's like high ranking of somewhere. But like, how am I supposed to know that melting or transforming metal is something that she does? Also, a character's weapon is supposed to tell you a lot about the character, but I think she's just carrying a regular SMG. Hold on, let me double check the description. Yeah, BA-02 submachine gun. Quote unquote, elegant, effective submachine gun. She's got another ability called Ruinous Blast, and it looks like she uses like rocks or nearby debris and just like 
yeets it into like an AOE. In the animation, it looks like she's aggregating nearby debris. And honestly, like it's not that clear that it's metal, but I, I think it's supposed to be metal. Overall, I just don't think her elemental theme is well executed, both from a character design standpoint and like an animation standpoint. All right, so what is this character's point of interest? Well, it's weak, but I think it's the gold on her arms. Like I would have liked the gold detail to be all throughout her body and like much more clearly on her face. I think there is some on her face, but it's only on one side, the the left side of her cheek. I'm dyslexic. Yes, left side of her cheek, but it's being covered by her hair. When I see her, I want to be slapped in the face with gold. She's a literal metal bender and that is actually the only cool thing redeeming quality to this character in my opinion so why doesn't her design scream that also i think the beauty of metal is that it doesn't have to look naturally shaped she has the ability to wield molten metal and you can see these geometric shapes during when her her terraform animation they're stacking right now to create that wall i want to see these shapes during her other abilities too wouldn't it be cool if she's like pulling environmental metal debris and like transforming these like generic rock shapes into the same hexagonal shapes as the ones we saw in con in her construct wall. I, I think that would not only add to the cohesion, but it would also add to her power fantasy of being this like masterful metal bender. <laughs> What is this character's power fantasy? I think it's to be this badass geriatric lady steeped in gold from head to toe and able to terraform by transforming metals into cool shapes. I really wish the devs took this one cool thing about her and just went berserk with it. But instead, we've got this character that honestly just feels like it. it she falls short and like, don't even get me started on her plain gun. Is she legible and unique? I don't think she's legible from like a thematic point of view. And again, her gun is just such a letdown. It's a plain SMG. It doesn't tell us anything about her. I'm not here going, ew, why isn't she hot, young, and attractive? I just wish that I could feel cool playing her. And the coolest thing about her just feels like an afterthought. So that was my lazy and rambling sort of analysis of two characters that I think are well-designed that I enjoy playing versus or in comparison to two characters from Concord that I think fall a little bit short um, based off my own criteria. This video is meant to be more conversational and a bit less edited. Let me know if you guys like this type of content. I was actually thinking of making a Wukong video being Chinese myself and having had watched the original 1986 show, which my mom brought with her, like the entire thing on VHS. I do feel like most videos made by Western channels discuss Wukong in a vacuum without the cultural context or they're using its success as a slap in the face towards woke culture. Anyways, that's enough rambling for today, I think. Till next time, besties. Take care.